Grace and peace to you today. It's good to be with you. We have another story for today, and our story is Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. It's one of my favorites. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind, and another, his mother called him Wild Thing, and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew and grew and grew until, vi until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max and he sailed off through the night and day. In and out of weeks, and almost over a year, to where the wild things are. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars, and gnashed their terrible teeth, and rolled their terrible eyes, and showed their terrible claws. Till Max said, be still, and tamed them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all. And made him king of all the wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all the wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then all around, from far away, across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, Oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, no. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. And sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day. and into the night of his very own room, where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. In the beginning of our story, Max does something wrong. He gets into trouble, and he's sent to his room. While there, he comes up with what's maybe an imaginary world, wanting to escape and get into trouble and not have any rules or any right way to behave, a place where he is in charge. But after a while, Max gets kind of lonely, and he starts missing his home and missing the people that love him. In the end, Max finds himself back in his room, a hot dinner on the table, and we see that Max has returned home to a place where he is loved and cared for, even if that means there are some right ways to behave. In a couple of our scripture lessons today, we hear words about where is our foundation, which means what is the most important thing to us, the thing that's at our core, uh, the thing that shapes us and then helps us to decide everything else, like who we love, how we behave, what we work for, all things like that. 
in the scriptures and in our lives, we realize that there are a lot of things around us that want to be our foundation, that want to be the most important thing to us so that they can tell us what to do and how to behave. But what Jesus teaches us and what Paul teaches us as well is that God needs to be our foundation. When we realize that, we realize that God is a foundation of love and grace where we are cared for and safe. And when we feel cared for and safe and loved, it makes us feel like we are able to care for and love others as well. That's what's great about having God as our foundation is that when we know we are loved, it encourages us to live our lives loving others. Can you pray with me? Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for being our foundation, a safe place where we are loved and cared for. Help your love that fills us pour out for others so that all may know of your abundant love and care. Amen. Have a great week.